Hi guys, it's KJM and it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas over on the Hallmark Channel. Yes, baby. I know some of y'all been wanting to hear some more of my singing. And if you didn't know, I just blessed you. Uh, last night at 8 p.m. Eastern, Navigating Christmas premiered and it's starring Chelsea Hobbs and Stefan Huzar. Now, you guys may remember Chelsea Hobbs from Nine Lives of Christmas. I remember for her from June and January. And these are both Hallmark movies. And she always plays the mean, the mean girl. And she's never the lead. This time around, Chelsea has stepped up and she is the lead. And baby, did she ever deliver. It was nice to see her in a, um, a different kind of role. In a more loving role than just being the mean girl. As for Stefan Huzar, I never know what to think about his movies. Last year's Christmas movie, Undercover Holiday, I did like it, even though there was some tone deaf singing happening there. I gave it, I think I'd given it a 9 out of 10 because I did like learning um, about a different cultural Christmas, you know, Feliz Navidad. Um, he had that A Royal Christmas Crush from Christmas in July. It was the first movie to premiere in this year's Christmas in July. And I thought it was a daggone mess. Um, and But that review, for some reason, has gotten over 11,000 views. So apparently a, a lot of you wanted to know what was happening with A Royal Christmas Crush. Kate Cassidy was the female lead in that movie. And apparently her and, and Stephen or Stefan... I always forget which one it is. Um, they apparently met on that set and they're dating now. They didn't have chemistry in that movie. So if they have chemistry off, you know, camera, then God bless them because I just didn't know what was going on. Okay, let me start by saying I am giving Navigating Christmas an 8 out of 10. And it is so surprising for me because I did not know what to expect, right? We haven't seen Chelsea in a bit. We've seen um, Stefan a couple times and he's either hit or miss. I just didn't know what to think. Navigating Christmas did what Christmas Island failed to do, which was deliver scenery. So I gave Christmas Island because I did really like that movie, but I'm a big Andrew Walker fan. That's my, you know, imaginary boyfriend. For Navigating Christmas, this, uh, you know, movie supposedly takes place on St. Nicholas Island and um, it's delivering views. We've got the lighthouse. We've got the small town, you know, charm. And for the first time, I think this Christmas season, or maybe it's a second, but I would say this is like the movie that does it for me. I actually wanted to participate in the town activities, whether it was the reindeer games, um, the Christmas festival lights, uh, you know, or whether it was just dancing at their local, you know, bar or whatever, like everything about this. And I love that we saw Stefan step out of his really tight character. He's usually super serious. There's a dancing scene in this movie where he just lets loose and it's a lot of funky dancing. And I'm just like, what the hell is he doing? But I was loving it, Stefan. I was loving it because you were so in character and you were delivering something that you typically don't. Before I get into the premise of this movie, which may mean that this may be a part two of the review, I want to shout out the cast. Let me get into the cast, okay? Now, Hallmark, I need to see more of Bobby Stewart. He played Earl. He has a transport business where he transport people from uh, the ferry that comes on to St. Nicholas's Island. Plus, he's the property manager for the lighthouse. Anytime I see this man in a movie, he gives me the surrogate grandfather feeling, meaning I want to listen to him. He's filled with wisdom. He's very good at what he does. I want to see more movies with Bobby Stewart in it. Okay, Hallmark? And this young lady played Sarah, um, Jace's love interest. Now, who's Jace? Hold on. Okay, Jace, a.k.a. Jason, is played by Everett and Andes. And yeah, okay, Andres. Okay. Anywho, I don't know why I can't talk today. Um, you know, this cast, and let me show you some more folks. Okay, we got Lindsay Gibson playing Mayor Katie. And she was one of those happy-go-lucky mayors that really wants you to experience St. Nicholas Island. And I love that about her. And then we got... 
Tanya Dixon Warren. She played Ruth, which is kind of like Earl's love interest. Okay, I know you're itching to really figure out what was this movie about. So let me get back to the premise, okay? Let me get back to it. Okay, baby. So what happens in this movie is Melanie is a single mom, a new, new divorcee, and she's got a son, Jason, a.k.a. Jace. Jace is supposed to spend Christmas with his father, who we found out left them for another woman named Laura. Now Laura is three months pregnant. But Melanie is not ready to tell Jace that. So when Jace's father calls to cancel, and he calls to cancel because Laura, Laura, Laura is three months pregnant and is having serious, you know, morning sickness, Melanie actually tells Jace that her dad had to cancel because his dad had to cancel because Laura has the flu. Okay, I think pregnancy and the flu are two different things, but it's all good. She's trying to protect her child. So now Jace is disappointed that he won't be sledding or skiing with his dad. And Melanie shuffles to try to find something else that she can do for her son, which is basically, um, you know, find him a Christmas vacation. You guys know it's super hard to book things last minute, especially around Christmas, honey. And so she finds this lighthouse on St. Nicholas Island. So she's going to leave Seattle with her son and they're going to spend Christmas in St. Nicholas Island or on St. Nicholas Island. Sounds like a good idea. Maybe, but maybe not. So we see Melanie struggle on the ferry, honey. She had a lot of seasickness. And that's the first time we run into Peter, who we later on finds out is the owner of the lighthouse on St. Nicholas Island. Melanie's over there about to throw up her guts. And Peter is telling her, get away from the, you know, the, the part of the boat that she's in. And we just see the water splashing up on her. It was a very good meet cute. Like, I love the way how they met. Now they're on St. Nicholas Island. Earl picks up Melanie and Jace and off to the lighthouse they go. Only there's a catch. Melanie, who's supposed to be a strong businesswoman and investor, apparently didn't read the fine print when she booked the lighthouse. The fine print says that anyone that stays in the lighthouse for the Christmas season has to decorate the lighthouse because the town has a tradition on December 23rd, which is the Christmas festival lights. And it's to represent when St. Nicholas was lost at sea. And apparently that light, lighthouse light came on and he found his way to land. And that's why they named the island St. Nicholas Island. Now, I'm not sure if all of this is true, but this is what's happening in the movie, right? So... Now, you know, Jace and Melanie look around and it's a lot of work to do in the lighthouse. And they're realizing that they signed on for a week long of chores. Jace is upset. Melanie is a mom that just wants her son to be happy and her son is a teenager. Uh, for anybody that's a parent or has helped raise children, you know that once they get to preteens, into teenager, into adulthood, baby things get more difficult. It's actually much easier when they're small. And so you spend a lot of time with them not liking you and, and, and it's hard. Plus, Melanie knows the real reason. You know, Jace thinks his father left just because his mom works too much, but she knows that his father cheated and left her for the woman, Laura, okay? So there's a little bit of scandal right there. So now they're in this lighthouse. They think they done got bamboozled and Earl takes them to go find the owner of the lighthouse. Well, baby, who's the owner? None other than Peter. Peter lets her know that like it was in the booking that you have to decorate this lighthouse. Like, why did you not read the booking? And honestly, if you guys are trying to sell her as a savvy uh, businesswoman, I don't understand how she didn't read the fine print. But then again, on the booking, it said five or six people were trying to book this same lighthouse at the same time. So I understand her wanting to make it a good Christmas for her child. So now they're on St. Nicholas Island and Melanie and Jace decide to make the best of it. And baby, that's when the magic happens. Peter has returned to St. Nicholas Island for the first time in seven years since his dad died. Uh, his dad was the owner of the lighthouse. And now he's going to help Melanie and Jace decorate the lighthouse. There is more to this story. And did I mention I'm giving this movie an 8 out of 10? The scenery, the town, everything was great. I think I'm going to have to do a part two for this review because there's like so much I literally want to say about this movie. Yes, Hallmark, you guys are getting this right. 
navigating Christmas was what's up and I'm starting to get in the Christmas spirit and I am the original Grunch baby. All right, see you guys for part two.